Good evening and welcome to our post-game press conference. Just to go over a few, uh, uh, I don't want to say rules, but the way we're going to handle the press conference, we're going to open it up with remarks from our head coach, Mike Norwell, and then uh, we're going to open it up for questions. We have microphones, two on each side, and you raise your hand, if you will, a microphone will be brought to you. Please state your name, affiliation, and to whom you would like to ask the question. So we'll begin with opening remarks from our head coach of Florida State, Mike Norvell. All right, um, you know, first off, uh, you know, tonight was a, was a very difficult night. And, um, you know, it's been a very difficult month, you know, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, I'm proud of this football team. I'm proud of the work they put in. Proud of the way, what they've shown, you know, throughout the course of a season. And, uh, you know, to do some of the things that they were able to accomplish. Uh, they overcame a lot of adversity. Um, you know, they, they fought, they worked, they invested on and off the field. It's a, it's a special group. It's a group that will be remembered. And tonight, you know, uh, so I, I, I didn't do a good enough job of uh, you know, being able to help showcase, you know, all of, of who they are. And, uh, you know, I take full ownership for, for all things that, that happened there on that field tonight. Uh, but, you know, when, it look, when you come back to this season, it's because of them. It's because of their work. It's because of their heart, their spirit, you know, the, the, the belief that they had in, a, in each other. Um, you know, for the third time in school history, you know, to be, you know, 13 wins, you know, to be able to, to win the ACC championship, um, you know, uh, and against, against, you know, a lot of odds of, of things that happened and things that occurred. And those guys just, you know, they, they did respond in, in a special way. And, you know, for the guys that uh, you played tonight and, and this was their last game, I mean, what warriors? You know, Kalen Deloach, uh, Demetri Emanuel, you know, Casey Roddick. I mean, you know, they're, they're, there's uh, James Rosenberry. There's a, there's a good number of guys that, uh, that battle tonight. And they chose to, to come out here and compete. And uh, you know, they, it was a special, special group of, of young men that I got, that I had the opportunity to coach this season. And you know, even though to, tonight was uh, was a different disappoint, disappointing result, um, this is a special season that will be remembered in Florida State history, and it's because of the young men. And now we'll begin our questioning. First of all, I'd like to again acknowledge our two student athletes that have joined us, Brock Glenn and Kaylin Deloach. So now we'll begin our questions with the question in the rear, on the left. All right, Coach, uh, Alberto Camargo, WTXL, a question for Coach Norvell. Um, if you could, for a moment, Coach, talk about the, uh, what this team means to the fan base in Tallahassee that hasn't seen a team reach the levels this team did in 10 years and just the impact it has on current FSU fans, the ones who saw that team from back then, and, and so on. No, I mean, this team, it's a, it's a special team. And it's one that, uh, like I said, they, they were champions on the field, but they also lived it off the field. I mean, the highest, highest ever team GPA in a fall semester, you know, pushing right, you know, 2.95, I think it was, you know, pushing 3.0. Uh, you know, the, the service that they do in the community, I mean, they do it right. And, you know, I believe that's what's allowed them to have this success. You know, we've, we've had to overcome a lot of adversity throughout the years and a lot of guys that have been on that journey. And, you know, they, they did it the right way. And, you know, they have set a foundation for where we're going. Because even though tonight was a disappointing performance, right, I mean, we have a special, special foundation that's been laid. And there is an expectation. And I know how our guys will respond. I and mean, we had guys that, that uh, were thrust into action tonight that really, you know, it was, they, they haven't got as much work. Uh, you know, it, to, 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 you know, opportunities. There was plenty of opportunities for growth. But this team and, and what they did and what they what they stood for, what they represented, uh, you know, they appreciate you know your fan base. They appreciate you know all Seminoles that have come before them, past players. Uh, they're grateful to represent you know Florida State, and they will forever be Seminoles. You know, in that that group that played their last game and you know uh, are moving on to the next step of their life. I mean, they're going to have life lessons that are going to allow them to achieve all things that are in front of them. Uh, but uh, you know, we are definitely grateful for, for this team uh, and for the, for the fan base and uh, you know, all that we represent within our university uh, because it is, it is a special place and it's because of the people. On the right side. 
Me? Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Mike, Matt Baker with the Tampa Bay Times. Given the roster situation that you guys had, what can you take away from this performance tonight, good, bad, or ugly? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, a lot of guys got uh, the most extensive work that they've had, you know, in this season. And, um, you know, we had a lot of a lot of young players that, uh, you know, kind of got, like I said, got thrown into it. And you get to see kind of where you are. You, I mean, there was, you know, some communication issues. There were some, you know, things that, uh, you know, technique and fundamentals where we can be better. Um, you know, obviously there was you know, things kind of started to snowball on us there, um, you know, throughout the course of the game. And you know, what are the things that we could do to 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 get that right? Because we've lived it throughout the season. They've seen it happen with you know maybe more experienced players. Uh, but now it's now it's you know, on on them to be able to. Uh, to be able to take those steps, and you know, we've we've seen it, uh, you know, you know, in, in challenging moments, and we've seen it, you know, you're done in, at, the, at an elite level, and so I think you know, being able to uh, have that opportunity for some for some young guys, um, you know, was big. You know, we had some guys that were were out due to injury. You know, it was, uh, I mean, it was kind of a, just a perfect storm of uh, of challenge, and uh, but you know, we've been used to challenges and uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn from this experience, we'll grow from this experience and, and we'll be better uh, you know, as we continue to, uh, to grow as a program. On the left and the rear. Uh, two questions for Kaylin. Uh, one, can you take time to reflect on your four years at Florida State and what it's meant to you? Uh, five. Five, sorry. <laughs> and uh, what it was like to play against Warren Brinson and Kamari Laster, two guys that you grew up with? Say my experience here at Florida State, you know, just being here from when we wasn't where we at now, just to see the growth and you know the, the guys that bought in, you know, from day one. You know, I've been there the whole time, so just see the, the growth, the buy in. You know, it, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna remember that forever, because a lot of guys made sacrifices, you know, to go out there each and every day to to be their best every day. They've pushed every day to be their best, and you know, I'm thanking them guys each every opportunity I get for you know this. It's given me the best senior year I done had so far in my life. You know, just the experiences and, and everything I got to go through, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, just playing against those guys, you know, from Savannah, you know, it means a lot because, you know, we show, showcase that the kids from our city, you know, we can make it. You can do it on the biggest stage there is. And, you know, I just feel like we gave those kids hope. So just to continue to do that and continue to push forward each and every day, you know, I'm, it's a blessing. Fourth row. On the left. Go ahead. Hey, Mike. Darren Stoltz, Fifth West 2. This is for you, Coach. Just given the perfect storm you talked about and the way that you were snubbed, was there ever a thought as a program, we're just not going to go play this? Just opting out as a program? No. I mean, it's. It was hard choices for, for a lot of the young guys, you know, for the, a lot of the young men that were on our team. And, um, you know, it's. You know, we were hurt. I think it's you know when when you do the things that, that our guys did you know throughout the year and you know the way that they responded the way that they fought the way that they you know just you know pulled together I mean it, it hurt you know when we were not selected and um, you know it's it, it was a like I said most challenging month I've ever had in, in my coaching career just uh, because you, know, you feel for your players and um, you know, as you, as you sit there and you go through it, I mean, there was, like I said, there were some, there were some tough choices that individuals made, um, you know, and um, you know, ultimately, I mean, I had, I had, you know, I talked to them about the opportunity and, a, you know, obviously there's uh, uh, guys like Kalen uh, that, that came out here and gave all that they had through the finish. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the guys that have been been on the journey throughout the season. I'm grateful for the guys that, you know, were part of this team, and you know, quite a few of them that didn't play tonight. I mean, they 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 did so much. Uh, you know, I hate that I hate that you know, I didn't get one more game with them. You know, and that's probably the thing that probably hurts as much as anything is just you know, there are going to be times in life where you do all the things right, and it doesn't go your way. Maybe you're not selected where you want to be selected. Maybe you're not chosen. Maybe maybe you find unexpected adversity. Right? But it's it's a response. It's gonna gonna showcase the identity of, of who you are and what you're about. And you know these guys have responded and they've learned a lot of a lot of great lessons. They're gonna carry them throughout their lives. But uh, uh, we had an opportunity to come compete and we came and, and we competed. You know it didn't go obviously any way near, near where the way we wanted it to. Uh, but there will be experiences that we learn from tonight that will 
build you know individuals and collectively a group as we move forward and um, you know I th I've said it so I got here I thank God for every challenge because you know he's he's blessed us with opportunity and you know tonight you know we we, fa we faced a lot of challenges but I know the opportunities moving forward and what we're going to do with them uh, and it's because of because of these guys and their willingness to continue to push and uh, that's something we're going that, to that we're going to absolutely do as a program just as, as decimated as the roster was, what is it like to walk out there and try to compete with Georgia as shorthanded as this team was? No, we were, I, I mean, I, I cannot, you know, I'm disappointed in the outcome and I'm disappointed in the things that that, that showed up and I didn't do a, a good enough job uh, in having this team ready to, to go and, and and perform better than what we did. Uh, but, you know, I told him this morning, like, you know, it's been throughout this journey, yeah, it's hard. It was hard to practice. It was hard to do everything, you know, in this, in this last month. But, you know, when, when you're willing to say yes, you're willing to stand up, you're willing to push forward, you know, I, I, had, I still had ultimate belief that, that we would find ways to be able to make the plays. And, we, and there were some missed opportunities. There was a play, you know, that things that, that uh, you know, we, we had to have happen right uh, there early. And we knew, I mean, that was, was – I mean, we knew that there was going to be a, it was a tall task. And I said that yesterday, and I've you know, I mean, but you know, I believe in who I coach, and uh, obviously, a lot of things that uh, I wish I could could have done better to help help this team and and uh, you put them in a better position. Right side, Manny Navarro with the Athletic. Uh, Mike, obviously, this isn't a fair representation of the team you guys had for those first thirteen games, um, but. Would you have been, I mean, how close to full strength would you have been? Would guys have obviously played, had you guys been in the playoff, with, or would there still have been guys that missed tonight's game or a playoff game because of surgery, et cetera? How close to full strength would you have been? Uh, there would have probably been, oh, no, there would have been guys that due to injury would have, would have been, um, would have been out or, or extremely limited. But, uh, you know, obviously if you're in the playoff, you had a couple more days. And we had a couple, we had a couple guys that were on the trip this week that, I mean, they pushed to do all they could to play. And unfortunately, I mean, they, they couldn't. And, you know, I think if we had a couple more days, we probably would have had you know, a few of them back, uh, at least in some limited capacity. Um, but this was a championship level team. I don't care. You go back and watch 13 games, and that's what you saw. And I'm fully confident in what this team did throughout this year and what they, what they could have achieved. We'd, that was not the, the path that was set out for us. And so, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm proud of the guys that, that competed tonight and, and the way that they, uh, you, know, you know, how they've responded. And, you know, obviously we'll get better from it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, something we'll never know. Left side. Uh, this question is for Coach M. Brock, Sydney Wicker, WCTV Sports in Tallahassee. Coach, for you to have Jordan Travis on the sidelines for you after everything that he's meant to this program, what did that mean? And for you, Brock, what was it like having his mentorship and to have him on the sidelines cheering you on and supporting you? Uh, Jordan's been awesome. Um, from the moment I stepped in here in January, he took me in, literally like my older brother. And that's, that's how I view him. Um, we've grown an uh, unbelievable bond together. Um, I know I can go to him for anything, and I know that everybody on the team feels the exact same way. That's the type of guy he is. That's the type of leader he is. Um, and you saw he left it all out on, there on the field this whole year. Um, outstanding player and even better person. Um, and I'm just thankful that, that I was able to, to, to get to build a relationship with him. And having, our, having him out here with me has been awesome um, and, and truly helpful. Um, during the week in practice, after the practice, he'd come up to me and tell me what he saw how I could do things better. Um, and I tried to apply that to the best I could. And even out here on the game, um, coming to the sideline after a drive, um, he, was, he was in my ear, um, constantly giving me encouragement, constantly giving me advice. Um, and he's helped me tremendously. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jordan, he's, uh you know, guys like Jordan, you know, Kalen, I mean, those guys meant everything to this program because they were here when we came in the door. And, uh, you know, they said yes. They said yes. And we laid out every every challenge you could imagine, uh, and I I mean I just love watching them grow, and uh, Jordan you know for all the things that he had to go through and you know probably times where he doubted himself um, you know all of what he could be and to see him go and accomplish all that he could ACC Player of the Year um, you know all the things on the field but he finished fifth in the Heisman you know I mean pretty pretty special um, you know for the what he did between the white lines for this program. 
but he impacted this program so much more when he was off the field because he is he is you know, what you see is what you get and his heart his his care his you know just passion for this place and passion for the people that he got to be we got to be able to do it with uh, is, you know he is a he's one of the all-time great Florida State Seminoles and uh, you know I am blessed that I got a chance to coach him I'm blessed I got a got a chance to coach you know Kalen Deloach you know you know Tatum Bethune different guys with all different journeys um, you know it's just you you see that you see what they've the impact that they've made and uh, man it's it's pretty special. Here's the first of our last two questions. On the right. Will McBroom, WVFS Tallahassee. Uh, Brock, obviously, you know, coming into the season third string, you don't necessarily expect to be, you know, thrust into a situation like this, but, you know, you stay prepared for it. How do you take the lessons from night like tonight where maybe not everything goes right and use those to learn in the future and continue to improve as a quarterback? Um, everything this program is built on is continuing to be our best and, and growing and, and when we face adversity to keep climbing and fight it um, and to learn from it. So uh, in the ACC championship, uh, I had some mistakes and I, I went back and I, I reflected and I tried to, I did everything I could to go back and fix the things that I, I uh, missed on or messed up on, um, tried to speed up my, my process. Um, so I think there's a lot to learn from in this game as well that I'm going to go back and reflect and uh, I'm just thankful for these seniors and, and what they've done for this team. And, and it's a true brotherhood. I, I, I really can't put it into words. It's a true brotherhood. We all love each other. We're super thankful for each other. And, and uh, this program's only going to go up from here. They, they, built, this, they built this thing up. Um, the seniors, Coach Norvell, they brought this program to the top of the top. And it's only going to go farther from there. Our final question. Uh, Mike Griffith, AJC Dog Nation. Coach, there's obviously different levels of investment across college football. Is there anything that can be done via NILs, collectives, to provide some incentive so maybe players don't opt out of the bowl games that aren't going to be a part of the playoff moving forward and keep the bowl system healthy? You know, I mean, I think um – you know, every situation is different. You know, I mean, ours, ours was unique to something that's never been, that's never happened in college football. And you know, ultimately, I think there's, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things that that made it extremely challenging. Um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think. Um, you, know, you continue to reflect. You continue to look at it. You know we have expanded playoff coming here this next year, um, that will provide more opportunities um, for for teams to compete for championships. You know when they earn it on the field, and uh, you know that's something that I think is is probably a good thing. You know for for uh, you know for players, and you know because it's a it's a it's a lot for them. I mean we went 13, 13 you know weeks throughout this this season, and I mean it's a I mean it's a physical you know, task and, uh, you know, especially with, with what we faced and, you know, winning every one of them and, uh, you know, you know, rising up and guys that played hurt, guys that played, you know, through every every different piece of adversity that could be thrown at them. Um, you know, when you overcome that and, you know, still, you know, have a little, you still have the disappointment of not, not getting to, to, to keep compete for it all. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, that definitely affected some of our, uh, some of our situation. Um, you know, I, I I fully believe that if we probably would have come up short in the, in the championship game, we might have been even a little different. We guys, um, you know, but ultimately it's uh, this team did all that I all that I asked them to, and uh, you know they are they are forever champions. And you know I told them in the locker room. I mean this game will not define the season. And uh, you know, but you know from now until forever they're going to walk into Doe Campbell Stadium and they're going to see that 2023 uh, ACC championship. And they're going to know that they were 13 to 0 and unconquered throughout that time. And you know we faced adversity tonight. We we faced our challenges. Obviously didn't play to the to the level of what uh, what we're capable of. And um, you know, but we're going to learn from it. We're going to continue to move forward. And when it comes to to a bowl season, when when it comes to, to choices that people make, you know, obviously there's a lot of people out, uh, you know, out there that will uh, have their opinion. But uh, you know, I do think that you know, they expand to play off and, and opportunities for teams that earn it will to, to go uh, compete for it all will definitely help. Well, thank you very much, Coach Norvell. Thank you, Brock and Kalen. And uh, thank you for representing the Atlantic Coast Conference and Florida State University. 
Thank you for giving your time to us after tonight's game, and we wish you the best. That will conclude the first part of our press conference tonight. Coming up next will be the University of Georgia.